Why not? Sure, I'll marry you. Chapter 3 It was the night of Pip and Presto's wedding. Ponies were partaking in festivities in every square inch of Zephyr Heights. There were food stands, games, plays, and magic shows on the streets. Music videos made by Pip and Presto, or both, played on the mega screens. There was a timer in the bottom right of the screens, counting down to the ceremony. Ponies were on their phones, taking pictures and videos, and sharing them with their friends and family in Maritime Bay and Bridalwood. On top of every other building, cartons of fireworks were set to go off as soon as the bride and groom kissed for the first time as husband and wife. Pip watched the festivities from her bedroom. Two maids were adjusting her dress for the concert before the wedding. Though Pip didn't care about the politics regarding her marriage to a unicorn, she was astounded to see so many ponies expressing their happiness for her. Never in 10,000 moons did she imagine so many souls supporting her getting married so passionately. Not even when her only fans were her fellow pegasi. Pip put her hoof on her heart as she fought the urge to cry, touched. Suddenly, Pip felt her phone vibrating from underneath her wing. She took it out and saw that it was a video call from Presty. Her heart skipped a beat, and she gave the maids a look, telling them to leave. The maids bowed and left the room just as Pip answered the call, and Presto Tetracord appeared on the screen. Hi, Presty Bear. She chirped. Hi, Pippy Cake. Presto greeted. Have you seen what's happening outside? I can see it from my bedroom. I didn't know there could be so many ponies in Zephyr Heights at one time. Pip said. I know, it's incredible. I've seen posts of ponies selling plushies of us that are handmade out there. Presto said. Seriously? Oh, you've got to share them with me. Pip said. Speaking of which, one of the ponies that brought Earth ponies, unicorns, and pegasi together made the cutest figurines of us. I can't wait to show you later. I'm looking forward to it. Presto said. Pip's smile grew gazing into Presto's grey-blue eyes. Then, her smile weakened, and she sighed as she looked back outside. I wonder how many of them are celebrating just because a unicorn and a pegasus are getting married. I'm thankful that our races are united so we were able to meet, but it would be nice if there's focus solely on us getting married, rather than just what it means for pony kind. No, oh, my love, this night should be a historical moment. Presto said. One day, race will have no focus when ponies are united in holy matrimony. But it has to start with us. All of Equestria will treasure our happiness even when we are long gone. Pip kept looking outside, as though she didn't hear Presto. Then she turned to her phone and said with a smile, I guess you're right. Ponykind has to start somewhere. Might as well be us. And after that, we don't need to focus on anything else but our married life together. Presto said. It will be just you and me. Well, you, me, and our fans. That sounds perfect. Pip said. Anyways, I better let you go. I'm performing in a few minutes. Of course. See you at the ceremony, Pip Puff. Presto said. I'll be the one in the veil, honey bear. Pip said. Pip hung up and held her phone to her chest as she let out a blissful sigh. She felt goosebumps in her body as she thought of everything Presto said about what their married life would be. The thought made Pip more eager for the wedding to happen so she could sing her song for Presto. Eventually, Pip took a deep breath to focus on the concert. She closed her eyes and did vocal warm-ups before exiting her bedroom and heading to the backstage room above the throne room. When she arrived, two ponies attached wires to her dress and ran a test to ensure they were sturdy. Pip paid no mind to them, for this was a normal routine whenever she was going to pretend to fly with her mom and sister. Queen Haven was powdering her face in the dressing desk close to the edge. Cloudpuff stood next to his owner, dressed in a little cloak with holes for his wings and a bow tie. Haven saw Pip through the mirror and smiled as she turns to her youngest daughter. Your last concert before getting married. How are you feeling, Pumpkin? Haven asked. Excited and anxious. I love my fans, but I just can't wait to be married. Pip said. Oh, don't be hasty, my darling. I'm not in a hurry to pronounce my little girl as a married mare. Haven said. I wish your sister would find someone. 
I'd be at ease knowing someone will be by her side when she becomes queen. Pip chuckled and said, <laughs> I'd like to see some pony try to woo Zip. Your best bet might be to make an arranged marriage. Don't tempt me, Pip. Haven said, Your Highness, we're going to start the show in two minutes. A crew pony said, Thank you, Frank. Pip said, Frank nodded and told the operator behind the curtain in the throne room that they were ready through his headset. A few seconds later, the wires lifted Pip up and sent her hanging above the hole to the throne room. Pip took a deep breath and did more vocal warm-ups for safety as her mother watched with a smile. Remember to enjoy performing for your fans, Haven said. I always do, Mom, Pip replied. Down in the throne room, Sunny, Izzy, and Hitch stood in the middle of the crowd waiting for the concert to start. The walls and windows were decorated with flowers, party drapes, and lights. There were whites, pink, and lilac cloudbuster balloons hanging above the ceiling. There was a stage set up in front of Haven, Pip, and Zip's thrones with a golden arch at the center. Sunny and Izzy wore neon light necklaces, fake earrings, and face paints. Sunny had plushies of Pip and Presto, and Izzy was wearing a plastic ring on her horn that they had won from playing games. Hitch played some games, but mostly acted as the mayor's chauffeur. Still, it was nice to watch his childhood friend enjoy the festivities with her best friend. Hitch felt some pony bump into his side, and he turned his head to see Periwinkle Pie's apologetic face. Izzy was more than happy to take Hitch's suggestion to make Periwinkle her plus one after he explained her reason for wanting to go to the wedding. Periwinkle partook in activities the least among the group. Sometimes she watched Sunny, Izzy, and Hitch play games and dance. Other times her focus was on Presto's music videos playing on the mega screens. Eventually, the group would push her into joining the fun, which eased her up. Periwinkle even won a pizza eating contest, winning a unicorn raccoon plush. However, when it was time to go to the castle, it was back to focusing solely on her goal. When they went inside the castle, Periwinkle told the others to go ahead while she used the restroom. And so Hitch waited, hoping she'd be back before the concert started. Sorry, it was hard to find you guys. Periwinkle said. That's alright, the concert hasn't started yet. Sunny said. Are you ready for this? Hitch asked. Periwinkle hesitated and turned her head to her saddlebag. I'm prepared. She answered. Either way, I really appreciate you guys giving me this chance. Oh, pff, you've said that like nine times since we invited you. Izzy said. I know, but I can't help but be grateful that I can make this one attempt to get Presto to notice me. Periwinkle said. Plus, how often do you get to watch your favorite artist perform in Zephyr Heights Castle? It's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, to say the least. <sighs> You're telling me? This has already been a wonderful night. I can't wait for the wedding itself. Sunny said. Uh, I still hope for the best for you, Periwinkle. You don't have to hide it, Sunny. You have your dream for tonight, and I have mine. Periwinkle said. Sunny gave Periwinkle a sad smile, knowing she was trying hard to keep her cool. Suddenly, the lights dimmed and ponies cheered and stomped their hooves. Pop music was playing and party lights lit up the room. Sunny, Izzy, Hitch, and Periwinkle expected some pony to appear on the stage until Sunny noticed ponies holding up their phones at the ceiling and looked up. Guys, look! Sunny shouted. Izzy, Hitch, and Periwinkle looked up to see Pip pretending to fly down with two spotlights on her from both sides. Pip waved at the crowd before she leaned forward as the wires lowered her to make it look like she was diving down. Ponies cheered louder as Pip pretended to fly a few feet above them. Finally, Pip began singing her song, and ponies immediately sang along while waving their phones with their flashlights on. But while Sunny, Izzy, and Periwinkle sang, Hitch watched Pip in awe. All his life, Hitch feared seeing a Pegasus fly. That's what made him at ease when he learned the Pegasi had no magic. And yet, seeing this mare flying above him with poofy wings, a pretty dress, and a radiant smile entranced Hitch. As if he was looking at an angel. Eventually, Hitch looked back and saw that his plot was shaking to the rhythm of the music. He embraced the moment and hummed the melody while bobbing his head. Hitch didn't look away from Pip as she went on from one song to the next. 
Sunny noticed Hitch enjoying the concert and smiled. It gave her hope that Hitch might become open to things outside of being a sheriff. Finally, after Pip finished her last song, the crowd applauded with some ponies chanting her name. Pip looked down at the crowd with a heartfelt smile before she cleared her throat. Thank you, every pony. It means so much to me that you all are here for this momentous occasion. She said. How's every pony doing tonight? The ponies cheered and stomped their hooves again. Do we have any unicorns in the house? Pip asked. Izzy jumped up and down like a little filly as she and Periwinkle cheered with the other unicorns. Well, I have my eye on only one. Pip said, smirking. Suddenly, smoke appeared from the stage and ponies cheered as Presto appeared from it, wearing a blue onesie and holding a microphone. He looked up to see Pip being lifted back up and blew a kiss. Pip's smile grew and she mouthed, I love you. Presto smiled and mouthed, I love you more. Before Pip was out of sight. Hitch, Sunny, and Izzy turned to Periwinkle, whose face turned cherry red, and her knees wobbled at the sight of Presto. She slapped her cheeks to break out of her trance and took off her saddlebag. Hold this for me, Hitch. Periwinkle said, handing her bag to Hitch. Hitch hesitantly complied, taking the bag as Periwinkle opened it and took out a piece of folded cardboard paper. She unfolded the paper, revealing it to be a large sign with the words, Marry Me, drawn in red and black marker. There were hearts around the text made with glitter and glue, and a wide arrow pointing down below the text. Periwinkle closed her eyes and took a deep breath while holding the sign close to her before she lifted it so it was right above her. Marry me, Presto, please marry me! Periwinkle shouted. But by the time she began shouting out to her crush, the music had started and ponies cheered as Presto sang his first song. Periwinkle bit her lip, worried that she may have made her move too late. Then she stood up on her hind legs, holding the sign as high as she could, chanting, Marry me! Marry me, Presto! Sonny and Hitch looked at each other, uneasy, with Hitch's ears hanging low. He started to regret suggesting that Periwinkle came with them, thinking she might not accept failure to get Presto's attention, as she thought she would. Hitch thought of telling Periwinkle to stop, but he didn't have the heart to prevent her from seeing her goal all the way through. He could only hope that he, Sunny, Izzy, and Periwinkle's friends back at Maritime Bay would help her move on once everything was over. I can only imagine how cringy it must be to show up to a wedding, someone else's wedding, and then say, marry me instead. My god, that must feel very awkward. Anywho, let's get on to our lovely donators. Top donators are 630, Only One Thing, Saru Orion, and Iron Sky. Darkside, Raiden, Narwhals, Black Moon, Heart, Pastel Skies, Austin Rollins, Stu Hex, Sword Brother, and Mordred, Omicron, Lowry, Will, Chris, Twinky, Riot, Tail, Badass, Waffle, Shadow Moon, Luigi88, Chancellor Crust, Big Smoke 369, Bobcat, GJF, and many more amazing people. Thank you all so much for watching this video and live life to the fullest.